so we're going to make an air engine that's really easy. An air engine comprises of a piston and piston cylinder, a slide valve and a crankshaft. We're going to make the air engine because the same ideas in using making an air engine are the ones that you use if you would adapt a normal engine to run on compressed air. The piston itself. It's on a bit of aluminium rod, so it's nice and lightweight. And that's actually made out of my favourite material, builder's board. Now, in the US, you could use something like Sintra board. And you can see, I'm sure, that I've actually turned that down and then there's quite a thickness of PTFE tape on there to make that a snug fit into the acrylic cylinder. That acrylic cylinder is just something I had lying around and decided to use. The end plates here are again square, and you can see the air inlet there, and that is about as complicated as the piston and cylinder get. You've got some cylinder body, two plate ends with air inlets, a rod, and then a piston. And that's all you need to do to put this it's together. It's really quite easy. <laughs> all I have to do is blow in here. And there you go. Go to this side. <laughs> I'm not even blowing particularly hard to make that work. So that's really two pistons back to back. If we're using two pistons on a car engine, we'd use two pistons. Down to the slide valve. We well, have my piston cylinder and here's my valve. In the chest. centre here, we've got this valve setup. And as you can see, it's on a bit of 4mm rod. There's a bit of 6mm alley in there to keep them spaced apart and you can see what the spacing is like. Now the way this works is when the valve is in that position the piston needs to be in that position because when the air comes in it's vented into here which pushes the piston. As the piston travels up the air is forced out here and is able to go out there. So that will travel in that direction. Then what we do is pull that piston that way. Now we've got exactly the opposite. So we can blow the air in here, which travels behind the piston, pushing the piston in that direction, and this time this can vent out in that direction. So that's how it actually works, and the piston will go yeah, there. Engine, we're now onto the cranks. Now I wanted to introduce you to two things. The first thing is the Scotch yoke. Now a Scotch yoke looks like this. And the second thing that I wanted to introduce you to were these things. They're actually plumbing fittings. This is a standard 22mm 3 quarter inch plumbing fitting and it's called a Munson ring and they come with base plates as well. These base plates sometimes have a separate thing that you can bolt in there so you can actually make them as long or as short as you want to, which is pretty cool. And when you put them together they look like that. The really good thing about these is they take one of these. This is an inline skate bearing. It's a standard bearing. They're really cheap to get. So when you get a whole load of these and some Munson rings, what you get are some very nice bearing holders that actually uh, will be nice and level and easy to use and you don't have to muck around with them much. You just bolt those two things together. So Munson rings are awesome for holding bearings when you're doing any kind of model. Now, if we take one part of our Scotch yoke, that is the disc, and I've put the disc here on an axle in the Munson rings. So that's our arrangement for the disc of the Scotch yoke. Now, if you're anything like me, what you're beginning to see is a bit of a steampunk thing going on here. Because I love steampunk, it's not a problem for me, but I do like that actually. Now, the main axle at the centre was drilled out 8mm because a skater, bear skater bearing is 8mm. So we've got 8mm. Then we've got this separate rod sticking out there. And the centre of that rod to the centre of that is the distance of what's called the throw. Now the throw is the distance that these have to move. So remember, they have to go from here to here. If we look at the top bit here, we put it there and mark put it to the next position and mark, and measure that distance, that is the throw. So that distance is um, 3.2 centimeters in this case. So we're doing a diameter, obviously. So 1.6 centimeters from the center of there, I drilled that to the center of there to create my crank rod. So that is the first part of the Scotch yoke. Now you'll find Scotch yokes in just a ton of things. Anything where you want a circular motion to be translated into a linear motion, you very often find a Scotch yoke. So, uh, jigsaws have them, fret saws have them, that sort of thing. We could put this together with just a crank and a, a connecting rod. 
it's a little wobbly sometimes. Scotch yokes are really easy to make if all you've got is a drill and a saw. Um, I prefer them because I just love the look of them and I think they're tremendously useful and hardly ever used. So we get our pin and then what we have to do is create this slot as you saw in the drawing. Now that pin goes in the slot and as that rotates it actually travels along changing that motion. Okay so here's our axle, here's our scotch yoke right there and this is the piston um, shaft that we'll be looking at. So if I just hold that down because it isn't fixed and rotate it then we can see the piston going in and out rather nicely. That's actually pretty cool. Notice this bottom slide guide, incidentally. Okay, so it will actually be the other way around when it's together. This section will be swapped over to there, and that will actually be facing that way. So it'll be the other way around when it's together. Why use a scotch yoke instead of a link? Well, it's really adaptable, actually. We can change lots of things now. So we can change the position of the pistons in relation to the main crank really, really easily just by twiddling those nuts and shoving the pistons in and then tightening it up. So it's really easy to change the relative position of the pistons and the slide valve. Now, we also made that slide valve with some nuts on here and a piece in there so we can also change the timing of the slide valves if we want to so we could play around with this quite a lot and that's why I've made it this way I also really like the scotch yoke I think it's a much underutilized mechanism for translating rotary motion into the piston motion. here I've sawn it off as you can see and what I need to do is add a couple of cranks there we go, now they're in frame, and you can see what I've done. I've drilled through 8mm here to take the drive shaft, and then here there's another one. We talked about throw when we looked at the, pist uh, at the valve in the last video, but the throw of this piston is 6cm. So from here to here is 3cm, from centre to centre rod in. And what I've done here is I've made a little strap that connects the acrylic con rod to the piston rod but at one stage this was free to move and all I did was put the piston in position at top dead center and then spot a little super glue in there to stick that into place. So that's how I got the right length of that just by having two bits that slid in and out of each other and I just slid it until it was the right size and then glued it. So that worked really well as it happens. Okay, so the challenge with this stuff actually is the valve timing. It, it's difficult to know when to time those valves. Now, the timing is 90 degrees from the piston crank. Let me give you a side view of that so that you can um, better explain what that means. Okay, we're looking at the crankshaft, and here we've got the scotch yoke that operates the valve, and you'll notice it's right at the bottom. Now, here we've got the crank that operates the piston. The piston's set at top dead center and you'll see that the piston position is 90 degrees from the valve position. The direction of rotation is in that direction so the valve leads the piston by 90 degrees in the direction of rotation. Okay when we get it in that position then the piston and the valves have a particular setup. So let me show you that. Okay, so we're having a view of the top, and here's the, va the piston at top dead center, if we call the right hand side top dead center. The valves are positioned to close both of the ports. Now, as I rotate that, and the piston starts to go this way, that valve just opens to allow the admission of air. So the air comes in and carries on down there. This other valve here just opens to allow the air out, so it comes out that way. As it continues on its travel, there you go, you can see that the valve is pushed out, and that is entirely open. And then on the opposite side, that's also entirely open until it gets to bottom dead center. As it gets to bottom dead center, that valve begins to close. Now, this is where the flywheel comes in. The flywheel maintains the momentum and returns it back to where now both are closed, but in this case, we're now at bottom dead center. So that's how the valve timing works when it's in relation to the piston, and it's how the valve needs to lead to the piston. Now, if we uh, change that, so remember we had it 90 degrees in a clockwise rotation. If we do it 90 degrees in an anti-clockwise rotation, the engine will reverse. Now, obviously what we're still missing is the flywheel. 
So we have the whole crank set up. We're missing the flywheel to take it past that final position. So we do need that inertia to carry it so that the reciprocation Okay, so I stuck a flywheel okay. on it. There it is. It's just a bit of um, builder's board with some weight in it, really. Now, <laughs> there's no way I've got enough puff to actually make this run for any length of time. So it'll work either by pushing air in or sucking vacuum out. What I've done is I've sellotaped a vacuum cleaner to it. So here's my vacuum cleaner. There's a rubber balloon sellotape to the inlet hose and that'll be fine for getting it running, which I think is kind of cool to be honest. But it will be a bit noisy because it's a vacuum cleaner. So I apologize for the noise, but let's run the engine. So I went into a fair bit of detail because the same things that we do here are what you do to convert a normal engine into a compressed air engine. It's exactly the same stuff. So anyway, I hope you found the video interesting. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.